Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 28 June 2020. I am Saganandi, retired information technology professional, currently living in Thailand and swing trading stocks using Q systems and techniques. This is my email ID, tradingprofitably at gmail.com. My YouTube channel, Trading Profitably. Twitter handle, Saganandi and my traders forum sagannandi.com I regularly share live market and stock analysis on these forums. All these are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. In today's topics, as usual, I will apply the Q360 degrees analysis techniques to look at oil and gold, these two commodities, and then I will look at the market, sector rotation, industry rotation, and stock fundamental and technical analysis to look for trading opportunities. These are the systems I use for the 360 degrees analysis technique. I use Q Elite on TradeStation and Q Global Q Finder on Metastock for technical analysis, charting and scanning. For fundamental and peer analysis, I use Q Vital. For sector industry rotation analysis, I use Q Edge. And for market level index analysis, I use Q Index. All these systems can be run in 100% real-time mode. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. This is my YouTube channel, Trading Profitably. I shared the weekly market roundup videos under this category, market roundup. Two weeks ago, I demonstrated using Q systems that there were flip flops or reversals everywhere at the market level, sector level, industry level. One week ago, in the market roundup, I changed my trading stance to bearish. I prefer to take more short trades at that time, though my market outlook was neutral. Also, in that same video, I hypothesized that next week, that is the current week, the market might come down. Is that what happened? We look at that, but before that, let's have a look at the two commodities first. Here I am analyzing oil ETF USO using weekly daily at a glance template i am using q global running on metastock in the weekly chart after displaying the bullish headwind reversal signal oil has gone up for last four weeks uso is moving sideways in the weekly chart the backdrop candle color is remaining bullish in the previous market roundup i explained that on this day there was a go with flow trend following long trade setup. From there, price went up, almost hit or actually hit the upper boundary level and from there, price came down. Price is close to a memory trend line support. That is not a point where I would like to take any short trade because of the memory support. Instead, if price goes up, from here because the weekly backdrop is remaining bullish in daily if price goes up and gives a cyan color candle that will give the next trend following go with flow long trade setup gold etf gld this week it broke out of the watermark resistance level in the daily chart also it broke out of the 
watermarked resistance level, it gave a bullish flow candle on Friday. If you are fond of taking breakout trades, then you might consider taking a long trade in GLD on Friday. I am not fond of breakout trades. Instead, I like to buy the instrument at the bottom. When was the last opportunity for buying gold using that technique? That would be when price came to the memory support level in the weekly chart on this candle. In the daily chart, it was this day, price opened with a gap down move, however, closed sharply higher. In the weekly, it tried to go below the memory support but closed higher. You could use that support to buy gold right at that point, putting stop just below that candle slow. From there, price has gone up and by Friday's close, you have covered more than the risk distance. Using Q guideline, you could book partial position profit and apply trailing stop on the remaining position trying to let profit run. Now let's look at the market level using the market ETFs. Remember, in the previous market roundup video, I hypothesized that this week market might come down. That indeed happened. Here I am looking at S&P 500 ETF SPY using the weekly daily at a glance template and this time I am using Q Elite running on TradeStation. In the weekly chart for SPY the backdrop color changed to bearish magenta and the candle shape is also bearish. In the daily chart, price broke below the memory trend line support. Friday's candle color is magenta, that is also bearish. Friday's candle shape is bearish as well. Both weekly and daily are looking bearish. That is not a time when I will take a long position in SPY. Nasdaq ETF QQQ. This was the strongest of the four ETFs and it is continuing to be the strongest. The relative performance line tilted up this week. This week's candle shape is bearish. The color is neutral. This week on Tuesday, QQQ made a new all time high. That candle's shape was bearish. It had an upper tail. Next day, it displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal. I had tweeted about the headwind reversal signal at that time. Was that a time to short QQQ? No, because it had a memory trend line support right below that candle. On Friday, that memory support is broken. Friday's candle shape and color both are bearish. However, there is another memory trend line support nearby. If the next memory support is broken, that will prove more bearish for QQQ. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Here also the weekly shape and color both are bearish. Friday's candle color and shape are also bearish. However, there is a memory trend line support nearby. I will not short IWM because of that memory trend line support. Last of the four market ETFs that I study every week Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, DIA. The weekly shape and color are bearish. The daily shape and color are also bearish on Friday. Relative performance line is tilting down, showing it is underperforming the market. 
if I wanted to short any of the four market ETFs, then Daya seems to be the right candidate because it is looking the weakest among the four ETFs. If you are following me on my YouTube channel, Twitter or Traders Forum, you know that instead of buying or shorting an ETF, I like to drill down inside the ETF and look for the strongest stocks for buying or the weakest stocks for shorting. Here I am looking at Dow Jones Industrial Index DJI using Q index. Dow Jones Industrial Average Index is certainly weak. On Friday, 97% of constituent stocks were down. Over two days, Thursday, Friday, 81% stocks were down. And over five days, that is one week period, 90% of Dow stocks were down. It is steadily going down over one day, two day, five day and ten day period. You could short DIA, but I have access to Q index. I could drill down into the constituent stocks and look for shorting candidates based on fundamentals. Here I have the fundamental scorecard of all the Dow constituent stocks. I may focus on the stocks that are weak both in terms of valuation. The valuation is in magenta color and also where the earnings growth is negative. There are smart filters for that, like this three star. If I click that, it will show me the stocks that are weak both in terms of valuation as well as earnings growth in the last quarter. One stock that comes to notice is Nike. It announced earnings last week. On Friday, after earnings, it dropped heavily by 7.6%. Still, it is very close to 52-week high, less than 12% below 52-week high. It's overvalued and earnings growth is negative and reducing. Revenue growth also turned negative and reducing. That is a start candidate in terms of fundamentals for taking a short trade. Let me check out the stocks industry using Q Edge Industry Scorecard. I can do that by clicking the cog icon. That took me to Nike's industry footwear and the real-time industry rotation scorecard instantly shows that the industry is weak and it deteriorated rapidly. That rapid deterioration is also showing as deceleration shown by the pace column. The industry is weak, fundamentals are also weak. What about the technicals? Let's check the technicals using Q Global at a glance template. This is Nike using Q at a glance template using Q Global running on Metastock. After the sharp drop, Nike recovered equally sharply. Until this point, the weekly backdrop color was bullish. Two weeks ago, it changed to neutral and that candle shape was also bearish. Next week, it tried to go up, shown by the upper tail, however closed lower. The candle color remained neutral, the shape remained bearish. And this week, again it tried to go up, shown by the upper tail, closed lower, closed at the very low of the week, with a bearish shape and bearish backdrop color. In the daily chart, after displaying the headwind reversal signal, it has not been able to go up. First, it dropped sharply with a gap down, tried to go up a little bit, and then on Friday, dropped sharply again after earnings. It broke below the memory trend line support. 
Friday's flow candle color turned bearish magenta shape is very bearish it dropped with extreme bearish pressure and extreme high activity Nike is looking bearish in terms of technicals fundamentals as well as industry score instead of shorting dia which is the weakest of the four market ETFs you could short Nike which is one of the weakest stocks inside dia in terms of fundamentals industry score as well as technicals after the market analysis i am looking at the sectors here i am looking at the 11 sectors performance across different review periods across five days ten days and one month period however this is a picture from one week ago i shared it in the previous market roundup and I hypothesize that from there market might come down. At that time, one week ago, for the weekly period, five days period, seven sectors were up, four were down. Overall, the sectors were still bullish. What happened this way? This is the same sector performance chart for the current week. This week, all the sectors came down and the red bars are showing that they came down with significant percentage my hypothesis of previous week that market might come down indeed came true if you were watching my market round of videos then you would know that my hypothesis often comes true why so I guess it is because I am looking at the market in a holistic way. I am looking at the market ETFs. I may also look at the market breadth indications. And I am not only looking at market breadth from NASDAQ, NYSE, up, down and advanced decline. I am also looking at market breadth using QH, sector breadth, industry breadth, stock breadth. And I am also looking at bullish and bearish balance from QFinder. I am looking at the sector's rotation, industry rotation. I am making a holistic view of the market from that. And I think that is why my market hypothesis often comes true. At present, over five days, all the sectors are down. Over two week period, only one sector is up. Ten are down. And over one month period also, most of the sectors, nine sectors are down. In the previous week, over one month period, most sectors were up. And now most sectors are down over one month period also. That is showing bearishness at the sector level. Now let's make a week to week comparison of the sector moves. This is a picture from one week ago. At that time, seven sectors were up four were down in the week prior to that all the sectors were down from bearish stance the sectors became more bullish that was one week ago from bearish to bullish and i hypothesized that this week could be bearish again let's look at the week to week comparison of the current week this is the current week picture week to week comparison one week ago some of the sectors were up and this week all the sectors are down by significant percentages it clearly shifted to a bearish stance what about Friday's sector move on Friday all the sectors were down and they were down by large percentages energy was the worst performer it went down by 4.6 percentage followed by financials that went down by 4.4 percentage looking at this drop in financials you may be thinking of shorting financial stocks 
if you are following me on my traders forum then you would know I tend to be little bit ahead of others because of the fully real-time queue systems and I could short a financial stock PB I think well ahead of others and on Friday while others might be starting to think of shorting financial stocks I could book profit in that stock PB let's review that post from my traders forum this is my traders forum open to the public saganandi.com I regularly share live market and stock analysis under this category Saganandi stock picks and some other Q traders also share their trading ideas time to time under this category Q traders stock picks let's go into my stock picks this is the idea that I shared a few days ago on a financial stock on PB let's look at that post I shared it four days ago here is a stock pick from today's graduates club meeting graduates club is a by invitation only club of the traders who share their trade ideas on this traders forum me and few other traders are in that club we regularly have meetings to discuss about the market about the stock and on that day four days ago in that graduate club meeting using live systems I identified this stock that was on 24 June the stock was PB and as usual I shared the snapshots that helped me identify the trade I saw that on that day there were large number of gap up moves followed by large number of reversals that led me to look for possible shorting candidates that had reversals I found PB that had a reversal setup on that day and I used Q Finder for that it didn't only have a reversal setup it also had a bearish breakout bearish retracement and bearish go with flow that is trend following short setup possibility totally there were four bearish Q signals on PB on that day and the stock was down by minus 2.8 percent I identified the stock from Q Finder and then looked at its fundamentals it was overvalued and the earnings growth was positive but reducing fundamentally that allowed me to short the stock then I looked at the technicals the weekly backdrop candle color was bearish shape was bearish as well and the relative performance was showing weakness in the daily chart it broke below the memory trend line support with a bearish flow and a reversal candle shown by the band indicator technically it was looking ready for a short setup and lastly I looked at the industry PB's industry regional banks that was very weak you could instantly identify that from real-time QH industry scorecard everything was looking bearish and as usual before knowing the result I shared the shorting idea that was on 24th June let's look at PP's chart as of this Friday this is PB as of this Friday I'm using Q global here running on Metastock I shared the shorting idea on this day following Q guideline initial profit target would be the lower boundary by Friday the lower boundary initial target was hit and Q traders would book at least partial profit because the industry is continuing to be weak 
we saw financials drop heavily that is the sector itself also dropped heavily on Friday fundamentals are still weak for this stock therefore you might have no reason to close entire position you might book partial profit and following Q guideline you could continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run so far all the analysis that we did for the market level and sector level all looked more bearish than bullish let's look at some more market depth information using QH here real time sector industry rotation analysis tool this is a data from Friday Friday all the sectors 100% of the sectors decline if you look at the industry advanced decline 93% of the industries also declined on Friday and of all the S&P 1500 stocks 86% were down on Friday that is showing weakness at the sector level industry level as well as stock level let's look at some more market inside and this time I'm using Q finder Q finder helps you look at the Q signals bearish signals and bullish signals across thousands of stocks I ran it after Friday's market close of all the thousand plus symbols on which I ran Q finder 90% of the symbols are showing bearish picture and only 10% of the stocks are showing bullish picture and if you look at the number of Q signals in all those stocks 90% of the signals are also bearish if you look at the three categories of signals the strength signals are more bearish than bullish the red bars are bigger than the green bars if you look at the continuation signals they are clearly more bearish than bullish and even for the reversal signals overall you can see more bearishness than bullishness that is a holistic analysis of the market sector and Q signals now we are in a position to decide our market outlook and prefer trading direction one week ago I hypothesized that the market might come down and that happened now all the four market ETFs are having bearish shape candle in the weekly chart and other than QQQ the other three ETFs SPY, DIA and IWM all are having bearish backdrop color as well in the weekly chart in the daily on Friday all the market ETFs are bearish therefore the market level is clearly bearish sectors are down all the sectors are down over five day period and on Friday all the sectors are down again Q finder is showing that many more stocks are displaying bearish Q signals than bullish Q signals therefore my market outlook is now bearish for swing trading purpose and my preferred trading direction is also bearish my market outlook is bearish and my preferred trading direction is also bearish that is based on the analysis of market sector stocks as of Friday's close that may change next week and I am ready to change my market outlook or preferred trading direction based on how the market moves is there some chance that the market might go up next week yes there certainly is and that is because of the way the market futures are moving if you are tracking the market ETFs like I showed you just now and 
compare them with how the market futures are moving, you would see that market futures are relatively stronger when you look at them using Q charts. Let me explain. This is S&P futures, e mini futures, ES symbol. Here the weekly backdrop color and shape, both are bearish. However, daily is above the memory trend line support, above two of the memory trend line support. This is different from SPY. SPY could break below the memory support line, but ES is holding above both of the memory support lines. If you look at the NASDAQ futures NQ, again the weekly is neutral in color, bearish in shape. That was the same for QQQ. However, unlike QQQ, NQ is holding above the memory trend line support. Russell 2000 futures RTY weekly is bearish in color and shape. However, daily is again holding above the trend line support, two of them. And the last of the market futures, YM, Dow futures, weekly is bearish in color and shape. And here, daily has broken below memory support. When you look at the market futures, YM is looking weaker than the other futures. And when you looked at the market ETFs earlier, DIA was looking weaker. That was one reason why I mentioned that if I had to short any of the ETFs, I would rather short DIA and not the other ETFs. At the ETF level, DIA is weaker and at the futures level, YM is weaker. Because some of the market futures are just above memory support, I am saying that there is a possibility market may go up next week at least a little bit. When it hits the memory trend line support, the market may go up a little bit and that bounce may happen in the overnight market also. You may keep an eye on that. Though my market outlook is bearish and preferred trading direction is also bearish, I am aware of these memory support lines in multiple e-mini futures and if price holds those levels, I may be happy to switch to the bullish side and take long trades instead of short trades. If we said that there is a possibility the trend line supports will hold for the market futures and the market may go up next week, could we be ready with some buy candidates? Certainly we could. We could again apply the 360 degrees technique and let me explain one workflow that starts with Q Finder. The view is that because of memory support, there is a possibility of a bounce. Q Finder also shows that there are some stocks that are touching memory support and bouncing up from there, even on Friday. Why don't we look at them? You may for that go to the bullish tab, go to the bounce column, put your cursor anywhere in the bounce column and click the flag icon that will shortlist all the stocks that are bouncing up. If you also want stocks that are touching memory support and going up, you may put your cursor anywhere on the touch column and click the flag icon again. Now you are left with these 20 stocks that displayed a touch signal, bullish touch, as well as a bullish bounce on Friday. And the stock GTLS went up by the biggest percentage on Friday of these 20 stocks, GTLS. And what are the bullish signals in GTLS on Friday? 
it had a bullish flow possible trend following long setup it touched a memory support went up from there and it also gave a possible bounce long trade setup the blue cell is showing that during the week in past five days it had a gap up move as well why don't we look at gtls and see if this can be a buying candidate for next week this is gtls using q at a glance template i'm using q global running on metastore the weekly is bullish both in shape and in color in the daily it is going up in an uptrend it touched the memory trend line support and on friday it went up sharply precisely from the memory support level ended with a bullish flow candle giving a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup as well as a bounce long trade setup it went up with extreme high activity on friday technically it is giving a possible buying candidate what about its fundamentals and industry let's have a look at that Here I carried out a peer analysis of GTLS using Cubital, the stock fundamental and peer analysis tool. I ran the peer analysis for the same and similar industries. Cubital found 61 stocks. Friday the market went down, and most of those peer stocks, 67% of them, went down on Friday. However, here if we look at the stocks fundamentals, GTLS fundamentals, it is undervalued, shown by the valuation in cyan color, and the earnings growth is positive and increasing. That is giving us a star buying candidate in terms of fundamentals, and it also has a short squeeze potential. Fundamentally, the stock is looking very strong. What about its industry, industrial machinery? We can find out about that from QH real time industry scorecard. And that scorecard is showing us instantly that the industry is relatively stronger compared to the other industries. Therefore, now we found a potential buying opportunity in GTLS, which has multiple technical setups go with flow trend following as well as a bounce setup for buying its industry is relatively strong and the fundamentals are looking very good as you can see whatever be the market condition whatever be your market outlook preferred trading direction you can apply the extremely robust Q360 degrees technique to find stocks for buying as well as shorting. For buying, you would find stocks that are fundamentally strong in strong industries and that are giving technical buy setup. For shorting, you would find stocks that are in weak industries, weak fundamentals, and that are giving technical short setup. Even this week, when the market is looking very bearish, I could find both buying candidate as well as shorting candidate using that 360 degrees technique. Let me end today's session here. As usual, I will continue to post live stock and market analysis on my Twitter page as well as Traders Forum. You may keep an eye on that. I thank you very much for attending this session and I look forward to seeing you again in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.